My first video on this channel featured a visit to the Classic Rock Show in Liverpool, which was uploaded on the 14th of February 2020, which is what started it all off. Good morning everybody, my name's Kev Berry. I've seen this production many times, which has been on tour at the beginning of each year now for over a decade. It is a production that I as a musician always inspires me. Like many of its fans, I love the iconic setlist that never fails to impress. The sound and lighting are amazing, and the talent and skill of the artist is flawless in delivering note-for-note -note accuracy of each track performed. But for me personally, it is the overall experience that makes the classic rock show very special, which is after all a celebration of great iconic music. To find out more, I go backstage with James Cole to shed some light on the show itself, his guitars that he uses on stage, and his amplification to produce those vital classic rock tones. Must also point out that I did have a minor sound issue, which I hope did not detract too much from the experience. Hi guys, welcome to uh, Gigs and Guitars. We are at the Liverpool Philharmonic Hall in Liverpool. We are with James Cole today from the Classic Rock Show. So how are you today, James? I'm good, thank you. Fantastic. Well, James has kindly invited us backstage uh, today to talk about the Classic Rock Show and what a marvellous production it is, but equally about his guitars and his, uh, his gear that he uses on stage with the Classic Rock Show. Now, James is not only one of the guitarists in the Classic Rock Show, but he is also the musical director of the Classic Rock Show and a key part of the Cold Music Productions as well. So, so James, just how, how do you find it playing in the Classic Rock Show and balancing the responsibilities of being the musical director and also Cold Music Productions at the same time? Well, that is a, that is a, that's a big question. Um, in regards to the gig, in regards to the, the musical director side of it, I've got a fantastic team of musicians around me that kind of make my job easier. Is that people, um, now we've kind of been together for three or four years now with this group, um, everybody kind of, kind of knows their role, right. um, everyone knows their strengths and what they can bring, and there's some people that I can lean heavily on um, at certain times and we all work really really well together it really is a team effort really okay so, so, you, so you've got your team in place yeah. so what, one of the <coughs> questions that I really wanted to ask before mm. I arrived here today mm -hmm. is how do you pick the team mm. in terms of who do you want as being on your sort of side on the stage and you've got the people that you would go to but if you for example got say somebody's unavailable mm -hmm. what, what's, what, what's your next plan? What's my next plan? Well the, the aim and the hope is for the people who've done it the last few years we can keep because the, the, the lineup that we've had for the last few years is very, very strong. Um, I mean, the, the introduction of Pete Thorne to the show, I, th I think, took the show to another level. Yeah. Uh, Jesse and Rudy and Jess vocally um, are incredible and give you the opportunity, actually including Wayne um, vocally as well, really gives us the scope to perform almost anything within this right. genre that is classic rock. I don't think there's been a song yet that we've struggled to kind of make work. Right, um, yeah. Tim, Tim Brown on drums, it's couldn't get amazing. a better rock drummer. <laughs> That's um, it, absolutely amazing. And, um, <coughs> and Henry, um, Henry, Henry's just fantastic. He is, um, he's, got an, he's just got a musical ear, can, can perform anything. Um, and when it comes from a, a, a the musicality side of it, if there's anything I'm kind of struggling with, I can heavily lean on, on Henry. Right, okay. So, so if I can just take you back to Pete Thorne. Mm -hmm. How did you manage to get mm -hmm. Pete Thorne, who is a, is, is, is a guitarist, YouTube mm -hmm. sensation, if you will, how did you attract him to the Classic Rock Show? I sent him a cold email. Right. I sent an email going, I am <laughs> the MD for the Classic Rock Show. You've probably never heard of us, but um, would you like to be considered to be a part of it? Right. And he sent me a very polite uh, email back go no that sounds interesting and uh, I happen to be in the States with uh, another one of our shows a Bowie show called Live on Mars right yeah and I said well uh, I'll fly to LA and I'll come see you and um, I, I explained to him that the classic rock show was um, produced by the same production company that produces Brit Floyd and he'd been to see that and he understood the quality that CMP produces right, his shows so he's got a connection there already with yeah the, he'd, the he'd, he'd been to yeah. see Brit Floyd and understood that, ah, this is CMP. So if that's good, then so will this. Right, with you. And he, he, he well, he can tell you himself, but he took a, kind of took a punt going, well, let's try it. And right. um, 
but he's still here. <laughs> still here three well, years later. Yeah, like I say, it's on his third season. He's yeah. third tour with the, with the with, with the classic rock show. Um, I, I follow like like you do. Pete mm -hmm. Thorne is very successful on his YouTube channel. I mean, I watched his Sunday night edition from uh, the Philmonic Pub. <laughs> he was obviously absolutely fatigued, yeah. jet lagged. I mean, you've had a heavy schedule so far since. Um, Last since, Thursday. Since the week last Thursday. It's yes. been non-stop, has it? So, yeah. so how, how have you found that? It's been intense. And this is the last show before a day off. Um, this is a run of four. So we did three days in the back room, at the, in the music room at the Phil. Yeah. And then we had a uh, production day in Basingstoke before the gig. Then we had the day off. And then we've done two Birmingham's, two Liverpool's. Right. So we'll be looking forward to this, uh, to this next uh, day off. I was just going to say, I mean, t time off is quite a, a big thing, but quite often it's sometimes not enough, is it? So, so when, when's your next sort of commitments after that? Is it just the one day off? And when, when's, where's the yeah, and then we've got, time? I think we've got Leicester, Cardiff and Salford. Then it goes into runs of threes or twos. Right. I mean, the, the guys are, are great. And, you know, if, yeah. if we put a run of five in, they'll, 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 they will obviously um, do it with no complaints. But um, you know, I understand this is a hard show to do. Yes. You know, it's not yeah. something we can do, you know, seven, seven shows in a row. So I have to take that into consideration when we're booking it, is that, um, yeah. you know, we, 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 we're doing 38 shows this year, which is the most we've ever done. 39, I'm sorry, we've just announced another London show. Right. Um, yeah. It's just the most we've ever done. So for the first time, we've, we've, we've put a break in the middle after 20 shows, just to give people yeah. 10 days just to reset. Right. Because when you're doing a show like this, just mentally, it, 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 it's hard. You know. it, it, it is. It is hard, and when you, when you see the glitz and glamour of the actual performance, it's it's like speaking to you now. You get a real understanding of, of what is involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's like other things as well. It's it's not just say, for example, doing the show. It's getting mm -hmm. the, the, the tour drivers to drive you in. They've got absolutely drivers hours, tachygraphs, and mm -hmm. things to comply with health and safety insurance, and all. It's uh, everything's going on, and that that's. That's that's you, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a little bit of a balance, it's, I think. It's so. CMP, yeah, it's CMP. There's a there's a there's a team of us who 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 are doing it, and uh, yeah, I think most people probably don't really understand how much work goes into putting on a, a, a show yeah. like this. And without our crew, we've got an amazing crew here. That you know, yes, the musicians we have to set up our gear, but I mean, we're pretty yeah. much white gloving it in comparison to what <laughs> you know. It. We're not having to l unload and load trucks. So yes, yeah. when we say we're tired. Yeah, but you know we could have real problems. You know the crew have to take all this down and set it up every day, and um, you know it is a, it is much, very much a team mm. effort. We get the applause, but the applause is not for us. It's for firstly the music, yeah, because without the music there is no show, and then it's for the it's for the the, the crew and and um, CMP for being able to put this together, and yeah. then it's, and then I think it's for us, right. Okay, so James, mm -hmm. so just in terms of, obviously we, we've got a band here, we've got some really good personalities involved. Yep. It looks like a really good sort of feel, a good factor actually on the stage, mm -hmm. which, I'm, which I'm sure it is because I can see that they're when I'm watching you guys. You know. <laughs> but they're all talented as well, aren't they? They've all yep. got their own natural sort of talents to bring to a show like this. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives you probably the sort of the flexibility in deciding mm -hmm. what material you do. Now mm -hmm. in terms of your set list, yep. Um, I saw last night's set list, mm -hmm. great, I absolutely loved it, I thought it was a nice good balance mm -hmm. between what people want and what you guys need to, to do for yourselves as well. How flexible is the set list from night to night? Do you make any changes? Um, as the tour progresses we will inevitably make changes, yeah. just because there is so much material and we're, we're, we're lucky in that fact that there is so much to choose from. That Right. And we've actually done, you know, I think I worked out that the classic rock show has performed over over 50 different songs, probably more actually, if I really thought about yeah. it. That to go and stick in something from last year or the year before, because they're all so good, give us three or four goes around it in a sound check, we can probably we can probably yeah. make it work. <laughs> um, and um, so that, you know, the the guys are already talking about songs we can add, but right. we're only on show four. Yeah. Oh, so I'm like, well, let's give us a week. Let, it's still not completely second nature yet. We're st I'm still in the process of um, working out, oh, what's next? What mm -hmm. are we doing for this? It's not completely in yet. Right, with you, yeah. yes. Yeah. So it will, in, a few, in a few days it will, and then I'll start thinking about other right. things. But also, it's not broken. Why fix it? Uh, uh, absolutely. So, so, for, so, for example, you've got a set list. Mm -hmm. um, again, it was a great show last mm -hmm. night. What are your favourite tracks that you do? You must have 
certain tracks you think, right, I can't wait to get stuck into this track because I really, really love it. So what would they be? Well, it's, it's funny, um, and I, I will answer your question, but I'm going to answer it in a different <laughs> way. Because I usually get asked who chooses the set list. <coughs> yes. And I usually say it's a dictated democracy because everybody has to tell me their opinions. Yeah, and yeah. I kind of take them all, absorb it, and put it together <laughs> what I think. Um, what, what I think is a good flow for an audience. Yeah. Balancing what Rudy wants, what Pete wants, what Jess wants, what Henry wants, what Pete um, wants. And, you know, it's, you've got to really think about everyone and what... Because the worst thing you want to do as a performer is go out yeah. to something that you're not feeling. Mm. So to, to go back to what are my favourites, um, I have to consider what's everyone's favourites yeah. as well because there have been paths where I've suggested a song and a, uh, a couple of the guys have gone, no, that's, right, we're, not feeling, we're not feeling that. Yeah. And it's like, cool, if yeah. you're not feeling it, I'm not going to ask you to play something that you're not feeling. Absolutely I get it. Right. Yeah. Um, so what's my favourite song in, this, in the set? <laughs> my, yeah, I really enjoy Romeo and Juliet. I think that is a song that you don't get to hear very often done like that. Yes. And I think what Wayne brings to the show is just, it's the, it's just the musicality and it's the yeah. credibility, um, I think. You know, there's no mimicking. We're just a bunch of musicians just trying to perform our favourite songs. Yeah. Um, I grew up loving David Gilmour. Right, yeah, I can so, appreciate that one. <laughs> so, I, Brick and the Wall was one of the first solos I tried to learn. Was it? When yeah, I started yeah. playing. So to yeah. perform that is also fantastic. Brilliant. You know, there's always... Um, I've overheard Pink Floyd over the last ten years, but it, it's still... I've still got the love of David Gilmore. And so his that, it's, it's a bit like me with that. If, if I'm finding I'm sort of getting into a bit of a rut with <coughs> playing, I go back to what I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. so do you find you go back to David Gilmore? To, to I started off, in, you know? my, first, my first electric guitar was a Fender Stratocaster, Mexican Strat. Right. And it was years before I got a Les Paul. Yeah. And it was like, I'm a Fender guy. Right. Just, that's what you do when you're a teenager, <laughs> you just say these things. Yeah. Um, and it's complete, as you can see, it's completely changed now. Um, yeah, I'd have to say Gilmore is the... Pro there's, two, there's two guitarists why I wanted to play guitar. David Gilmore and the other one was Rick Parfitt. Right, I interesting. Remember what, I remember um, CMP used to um, promote a festival in, the, uh, um, in Liverpool in the summer called the Summer Pops. Right. It, was it was a big tent they used to set up at, at the King's Dock and we had a different artist every night. And we had... Um, Status quo. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Didn't know status. I was like twelve. Didn't know. Didn't status quo. Didn't know. Just thought oh, I'll go yeah. and see it. And I remember they came out obviously to Caroline, and the first time you heard that Telecaster sound, deck, I was like, ooh. Oh right. Oh right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is this is what this is about, then, is it? Yeah. And since then, yeah, I. Right. It's um, yeah, status quo are a really big do, reason do why know, I want to play. Uh, uh, this is going to bring me on to one of the questions I was going to ask you. I was going to do like a quick fire three shot kind of question okay. so for, for every band member really. Okay. And uh, one of them was basically, I was going to give you a choice between two musicians and I basically, did, I basically nominate who the two you prefer. Okay. So out of, now this is where I've got it wrong because I didn't realise. Didn't consider that. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't consider that one at all so that's a curveball moment. So for example, if I yeah. threw at you, mm -hmm. Who's your favourite artist? Mm -hmm. David Gilmour mm -hmm. or Peter Green? Peter Green. Peter Green, right, brilliant. Yeah. Why, why is that? Because I think he was magic. Right. I don't think he knew how he did it. Yeah. I don't think he meant to do it. He was just Peter and it was a tone, it's a tone that we're still chasing. Yes, absolutely. It, it's a tone that we'll continue to chase yeah. for as long as we play. Um, and I mean, there won't be another David Gilmore, but there certainly won't be another Peter Green. That's right, yeah, absolutely right. So, so that's been an interesting question. So that leads us on to, is it, is it worth nipping onto your guitar uh, armoury now? We so, can do. So we can talk about your, your weapons within we can. your armoury. So we've got, how many guitars have we got here today? We have less than normal, let's just say it like that. <laughs> right. We have less. Usually was more, I think, on the last couple of tours, we, I made a point of having every guitar that would be appropriate for the song. Yes. So if it was a Telecaster or if it was... Floyd would have a strat or double neck for the Eagles. Yeah. And not to say I'm not doing that as much this year, I'm focusing on what I realised when we did that was that I'm changing guitar every song. Yeah. Different neck profile, different this, different that. And you spend more time worrying about 
the guitar rather than playing. Yes. Yeah. And it really, I don't know, it, it kind of got me down a little bit. Think, you know, yeah. worry, worrying about that side rather than just kind of, <coughs> excuse me, can I perform this music? Yeah. So I've, I'm a massive Les Paul fan, as you can see, and I thought let's just focus yeah. on that side of it. So my number one guitar is this Les Paul. Now, um, for those who may not be aware, all my Les Pauls, they may have that on the headstock, um, but they were built by a really good friend of mine called Terry Morgan. Ah, right. Yep. Who, who um, sadly is no longer with us. And I, uh, I got this guitar in 2016. Right. It was mint when I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I got it off Terry. And um, it's done every tour every, and every show I've, 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 I've done with the Classic Rock Show. And uh, yeah, it's the one that if it, all, if it came down to it, that, yeah, that's, this is it. That's the keeper, that, that's yeah. the one you'd go to. Yeah. So This is the closest to a, a burst if, if yeah. it, that, um, that I could get. I've put real paths in it. Yeah. Um, I've put some of the hardware as vintage. And I've just made, you know, there's, you can argue how much certain bits of hardware are equate to tone. That's, that's yeah. a story for another day. But I believe that these are quite important. Yeah. Um, and so I decided for one of my main Les Paul to have some real paths in it. Okay, and so it's the proper vintage sort of pass from, say, like, 59, yeah. 60, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. They're not going to be cheap these nope. days, are they? No, we, I was we, very... We all know that. They're not going to be cheap at all. I was very lucky <laughs> that I found these on Gumtree, and a gentleman was, um, from Newcastle was selling them. Yeah. And I went and saw them, and he knew what they were, and um, he was very happy with the, with, with the price that I, 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 I gave him. And he, he was, you know, and... Uh, um, in the last 10 years, they've just gone ridiculous. Yeah, th th things to do with sort of vintage Les Pauls, 59s, 60s in particular, anything to do with the hardware bits mm -hmm. and pieces, they've just gone biblical, they, mm. they, they, they really have. And some people love the flame. I've always been, a, I, I've always liked plain tops. Yeah. I just think they're just a bit more understated and yeah. I, th I think if it was like, say, the guitars of the period, mm -hmm. um, they would probably be more uh, of a, a, a basic sort of non-flame kind of maple cap to it, mm -hmm. um, you know. A lot of the uh, flames on yeah. modern day Gibsons are very in your face. Yes. Yeah. And that, that's just not, not for me. That, that to me is more in keeping. So just tell me a little bit about, um, also we talked about the paps and stuff, but let's talk about strings. What kind of string gauges are you running on? I, I, lengths? Myself and Pete both use the same strings, excuse me, which are the Primos. Yeah. Ah, right, so, uh, yeah, so we're on the... Oh, yeah, nine and a so half they're inch they're, to 44s. They're a lazy, yeah. they're a lazy, lazy man's 10. Right. <laughs> they, they feel like 10s, but just with a bit, they're just, just a little bit, bit lighter. Yeah. yeah. So, and purely, I, you know, when we're not on tour, I use 10s. Yes. But just when we're doing 39 shows and we get to Freebird, it's amazing that... Uh, I, I, can imagine, I can imagine that, that, that solo with the end yeah. is, it's very taxing. Yeah. Yeah. When you're back up here on that bit, it's like, oh, yeah. they're so happy they're nine and a half. <laughs> That's it. So, one of the other sort of questions in, in relation to obviously this, the Gibson scale length and the tension the strings are on a Gibson compared to like a, a Strat scale length, very, what I find quite different. Yes. So, for me, I'm running, say, Levitt on my Les Pauls, mm -hmm. Firebirds, but my Fenders, I'm running Tex. Okay. Are you running these on the same I, scale length all the way through? Yeah, I use that on everything, yeah. Right, and how do you find the transition between the tension? Is, is That's, so this is a massive reason why this year I've gone for less guitars. Right. Because things yeah. like that do make a difference. And you need a song or two to kind of get used to it, where yeah. I have a bar before the song kicks in. And it just yeah. started to do my head in. Right. <laughs> uh, to be honest. And that's why I thought, no, I'm just going to use a few more, a few more Les Pauls. Now, um, I'll just, I'll just give you yes, a thing about I don't so, be taking those on, guys, because <laughs> it'll just mess with me playing it really well. So, <laughs> so, so. just say, anything that's Les Paul was, um, was built by Terry. Right. So, yeah. we will just, so I don't have to explain that every time. So, this is, this is a 54, which is a friend of mine, and he's, he's kindly let me use on this tour. Um, and he, bought, he got this from Terry nice. in 2014, 15. And he, again, it was completely, completely mint when he, when he had it, and this is all play it. This is all playwear yeah there's none of this aging thing it's all playwear that's just just amazing we'll, we'll get some nice sort of still images yes, of these uh, shortly if we can do we'll do some really nice sort of photographs of those mm -hmm. um one thing i was going to say about your previous les paul yes. and, and i'm just looking at your obviously wrap round tail piece at the back mm -hmm. where it comes the strings come over the top guys yeah have you ever done the joe bonamassa on the normal les paul yeah bringing the, the how do you find the difference does, between the two it, it does it does make them slinkier <laughs> excuse me it, it does 
Um, I have done it on this Les Paul before, and um, yeah, because obviously it makes the string, it makes the string, the, the it makes the, the break angle, excuse me, yeah. uh, later, which means there's more string, so it does make it slinkier. Yeah. I when when I was on tens, I I did that more. Now I'm on the nine and a halves. Right. Um, and to be honest, there was no reason for the change, other than, rather than either I'd one day strung it another way and forgot. Right. <laughs> or my guitar tech, Dave, seen it and gone, oh, we're not doing that this year. Right. And I kind of just yeah, forgot yeah. about it. Right. Um, when I used 11s, um, I, had a, I, had, I had one tune um, with 11s when we had a, one tune to E flat and I wrapped that. Yeah. Um, but no, normally, yeah, it's a really good question. Why have I moved? I don't know. Yeah. Because I, I, last tour, I think I was top wrapped. And I don't know why I'm not. It's very, I'll it's, have to think about yeah, that. Yeah, I, 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 I started top wrapping mine this yeah. last sort of 18 months. And I can be honest, I mm. don't think I've noticed the difference right. at all, to be fair. Mm. Um, if there's a risk of string breakage being reduced, then I'll have that each and every time. But mm. I, I don't generally suffer from breaking string too much. Right. So <clears> this um, Les Paul um, was the last guitar that Terry built uh, just before he died. Um, he died in the April of 2020, yeah. and this was finished in the March. And it's owned by Terry's wife and the family, and what sh her wish was that um, when I'm on the road, it gets some... It gets some... It gets some use. It gets some play where it gets... It, Brilliant. It, yeah, so, it, again, this is... So, all Terry's, unless, unless asked, were come, you know, brand new. Yeah. Clean, 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 which is exactly how my other one came. And if you compare what... I'm just, just going to say, what, when, six, when, which, which six or yeah. seven years worth of playing does. I'm just going to say, when you look at the wear and tear on that, people pay good money for a, for a Gibson yeah. Murphy lab to look like that. We've just done it yourself. Even the yeah. colour, you can see how it fades. Yeah. Um, oh, just beautiful, aren't yeah. they? And yeah. so, um, the family are, are in, 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 incredibly, in, incredibly kind, allowing me to, to take this on the road and, um, you know, Letting it be used for what it was meant to be. Yeah, and, and it's a good sort of memory of, of the luthier that handcrafted it. Yes. You know, and the family would love you to do that. Mm -hmm. And each and every time you use it is in memory of the guitar maker that made it. So what track would you use that one on, or, or what tracks, if any? What I do with... Um, the, both Les Pauls are tuned standard. Yeah. The, um, and they just rotate. It's whatever... Right. Yeah, whichever one I just have LP on on the set list, and and Dave, my guitar tech, I just whatever say, he gives you. Yeah, hand me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, he, he, you know, if, if push comes to shove, he knows which ones to hand me. But yeah, you know, this this is what this is. It's it, you know, I'm I'm more than happily will rotate <coughs> rotate guitars and yeah. Um, as I say from last year, I think um, you were here when I used. I also own a Gold Top Fifty Seven. Yes. Um, which will do another video I mean, you can come and I'll show you all the vintage stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, well, it's, we'll do that, guys. James has got an amazing <laughs> arsenal of guitars elsewhere, so we'll, we'll be covering that if we can do. So. But I think we, with, the, with, the, with the value of these things now, you're almost yeah. terrified to take them out of the, the, the studio. Mm. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, it's, it's such a shame where you kind of have this fear. Of, a, of having yeah. something like with that much, but I've, I'm super happy with my Les Pauls that I've got absolutely enough to choose from. And brilliant. brilliant. And to be honest, these three these three guitars, excuse me, do the majority of the show. And anything these can't do, I have this, which is ah um, right the uh, the Sir. Yes, it's the, the, uh, it's the, the Pete, Pete Thorne Sir. The Pete Thorne Sir. I wonder why we've got one of these. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, all joking aside. This is the most versatile guitar I've ever played. Right. Genu it's genuinely, we did a we did a, a show in Malta in the summer, and I had to take one guitar. Yeah. I think it was this. Right. You can do everything on it. You can you can you know it's got it's got the coil tap. You can do the it, it can do strat sounds. It can sound like a Telecaster. Yeah. It can sound like a Les Paul. It's got 22 frets and and a trem. It can do everything. It's a really comfortable it's, neck. I mean. Yeah. What what John Sir and Pete have created, uh, it's got the Wilkinson trem, yeah, uh, with the lock with the locking um, screws. So it's it's essentially it can do every, it, it can genuinely do everything. It never goes right. out of tune. Yeah, which would, um, and once you have something like this, it makes you just again. I can without having this, this has taken the place of a Telecaster, 
yeah. a strat, a junior. A wa- so it brings you yeah. back to reducing the worry. Yes. <coughs> Beg your pardon. Mm-hmm. The pressure, the stress, mm. guitars, and yeah. more concentrating on the job in hand, which yeah. is producing great music on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, the truth is, unless you're a guitar nut like we are, the audience are just happy. They won't know. Yeah. That's not a Telecaster. <laughs> that's not a Strat. You will. Um, but they're just happy. And they, as, long as, the, as long as it sounds like they want it to hear. Mm. Um, and this is built for, li- this is built for live music you yeah know. Uh, it's noiseless it is it doesn't give me any trouble brilliant so, so, so we just talked about your sort of favorite guitarists and you used this in one particular track last night and you asked me how it sounded mm-hmm. and that was another brick in, uh, another brick in the wall part two mm-hmm. and you used this and mm-hmm. i was actually surprised at the time thinking you were going to sort of turn up with, with a strat mm-hmm. which is obviously the david gilmore kind of thing <clears throat> but this has done it admirably from where i was sat it mm-hmm. sounded great mm-hmm. really did sound good and looking at it close up i've not actually this is the first time i've actually seen one of these actually in the flesh mm-hmm. and it's just um i mean looking at the fretwork on that that's just just oh it's just nice isn't it so it's a maple cap mahogany it's essentially it's a let's pull with the trend it is it's nice that so um, uh, we've got lock, locking tuners up there as well mm-hmm. so and the, the you know the if we were doing there, if we were doing a full Pink Floyd show, we would have more strats and we'd have one with the MGs in and we'd have this. And we'd have everything that we'd need. But the reality is that it shows how versatile something like this is. Yeah. The nearest I've got to that guitar is uh, an Ibanez JS1000 with Joe Satriani. And I gig that for years purely mm. because of what you're saying there. It'd be interesting to compare the two, to yeah. be honest, at some stage, because they're very similar setup. Mm-hmm. But that. Yeah, it ju- just looks nice, and you've got obviously the uh, um, you've got Pete Thorne backstage who's designed this with John Sir, mm-hmm. um, and it just looks great, doesn't it? it sounds great. Yeah, when yeah. He, when he he brought one a few years ago for me to use, and I'll be honest, the first first tour I was a little bit not unsure, but I was a bit yeah. I just had to get you almost had to get used to it different because all my stuff has been you know as you can see it's vintage, it has a vintage feel to it, yeah. and it's so different, but. As I, you know, after that tour, I, Pete took it back with him, and I was like, I miss it. Right, with you. I yeah. need it. Give it me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or else. Uh, yeah. And um, <laughs> the last two, pre- two tours, I can't really live without it. Yeah. And like I say, if there's, a, if, there's a, if there's a show where we're traveling and I've got to take a guitar on a plane and make, make it work, yeah. that's what comes with me. Brilliant. And this, uh, this is a, an SSH Strat, which I did yeah. consider using, well, I would have considered using for a uh, brick in the wall, but um, it is tuned D to D. Ah, right, I see. Which yeah, is yeah. for Barracuda, and then yeah. we put a cap on it so we can go to E flat when we do Total Eclipse of the Heart. Ah, right, so I this, see. This, yeah. is the, this, this is the spare guitar, which is down tuned for those two songs. Yes. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, another sort of lovely guitar. Again, the, the, the fret work on it, just, it's just, just gleaming. They're fantastically you know, so, yeah. professional guitars. It's yeah. fantastic, it really does. Yeah. So, yeah, I can, can see why you're using the, the other Sir instead of this one that's in a completely different state of tune mm-hmm. and that's got a specific role with, with, with the heart tracks and, mm-hmm. and other stuff. Now, this, this, this is, you know, the way I kind of think of it, um, it this, this is a tool because of um, needing the, the two separate tunings. Um, and, you know, I want to try and use a Les Paul as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why in my head at the moment that's what I want to use. <laughs> if, um, I just feel comfortable. Really? Can uh, we get uh, one or two sort of plugged in, do you think? Absolutely. Have you got time for that, James? Of course we can. But before I go, I have to show you this. We oh, haven't, yes. We Let, haven't, have this, is, this. this is built by Mike Smith from Southport. And right. I haven't, we haven't put this in the, sh- in the set yet. Right. I thought I've not seen it before. This is um, the Rick Parfit. Uh, I don't know if he calls it a signature or if it's just his replica wow. that he makes. Um, and uh, it's... Absolutely incredible. I'm, I'm just looking at it now, James. It looks so visually interesting from each. I'm looking at the, the sort of the relic, the, the, yes. the antiqueness of it, the, the, the wear and tear. We've got, what's that bit around the volume knob? So this is how, how Rick, uh, the, that is um, a rubber tyre off, I think it was a Hot Wheels. Oh, right. And that's what Rick used to, to so he had a bit more uh, control ah. of his volume. Yeah. Um, and obviously with, with Rick and his, his Telecasters, he always put a Gibson bridge on it Yeah. To, for tuning. It is solid as a rock. It never moves. The string gauge is, oh, I, I think it's 
60 on the top, or it's, it's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Um, and this is tuned to Open G right, uh, yeah, for yeah. a song that we haven't put in the show yet, but we are currently learning and we'll be putting in at some point. Brilliant. But you can guess it is a Quo track. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not a giveaway. That, that could be possibly a giveaway. Uh, but that's just a stunning looking guitar, James. I look forward to seeing that uh, on stage at some stage very soon. Yes. So, uh... Okay, James, so, so we've got your Les Paul, mm -hmm. we've got your screen engineering head. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed you've got a different cab last night than what you normally have. Yep. Um, so, do you want to talk us through your live rig at the minute in yep. terms of what's what? It's, it should be, in theory, very simple. I have, yeah, I've got, the, I've got a 633 Classic 45 head that is essentially a JTM 45 yeah. um, inspired head with a few little extras from, um, from Cliff. Um, in the past, I've had a 4x10 cab. Yeah. Um, and recently, I was introduced to um, Mark Bartel, who used to, used to be a part of Tone King. Yeah. And um, this is his cab, which has got two, it's, got, it's a 2x12. Right. I think it's yeah, got yeah. fanes in it. And the tone that I've managed to get this year, I'm incredibly happy with. Um, and the majority of the show is the amp, and that's it. Right. Yeah. Most yeah. of it, my rhythm sound, my general kind of... Um, oh, let's give a bit. just the amp yeah, yeah. I'm not using there's no drives on that that is how much gain yeah. how much overdrive the amp is, is, is giving us right um, and the way I have it set up is that the amp is going into the boss Wazza tube expander which is an attenuation yes but it also acts as an effects loop which allows us to um, use the axe effects for all pre and post effects right and yeah. boosts yeah. So essentially, the amp is now a block within the axe effects. Right. But when, when we're not using anything, the, 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 the tone loss is, you can't hear it. So it's, a, it's essentially... The it's not true bypass, but it, it's as it's close as, yeah. yeah. So, um, so we, the guitar goes into the front of the axe effects, and then we can add any reverbs and delays, because all the effects inbuilt within Fractal Audio's gear is studio quality amazing right the what what i've done this year is i've got rid of the the the, the nasa style pedal board right yeah. and gone for a simpler rig that again allows me to focus on playing yes yeah, so it's, it's the entire sort of rig the, the guitars yeah amps effects pedals it's all being condensed to make it simple so you can concentrate on the musical side of it and actually deliver it without distraction yes what you need to do yeah. with it. So, and yeah. to go from, you know, to, to, get, to be able to go from a... <laughs> to then, if we go to, I think the second song is a Barracuda, which has got a lot of flange on it. <laughs> you know, all at the touch of one button, rather than worrying, out, worrying has, a, <laughs> has a cable come loose or, uh, you know, uh, and so really, all those effects are within the axe effects, but all the drive, all the tone, is from the amp. Right. And it's a really nice little combination. Um, it, it, do, it does sound good. I mean, if, I don't know whether this is being picked up on camera or not, but what I'm getting at the minute is some lovely warm sort of vibe spread from your, from your, your valve amp. Yeah. Uh, it just sounds good. I can feel, you're not going to get this on TV, guys, but I'm getting the impression of the room. And then when we do, say we do a Zeppelin track, and it's like, that, um, Jimmy Page's tone is very, it's brighter. Yeah. It's when you, you know, in that middle position, it's very bright. And so we're working out how to do that without completely changing the amp setting. Yeah. So with a bit of EQ and a treble booster. <laughs> The majority of the way there just with a few little tweaks but again 90 percent of this or 99 percent of the sound is just the drive it's just the drive yeah. um, i like the sound of that that sounds nice yeah. that does sound it sounds really good. bright but when you're out bit in the mix yeah it sounds great it does sound good mm -hmm. so, so mo the majority of the show um is 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 the drive sound with maybe a little bit of reverb delay and the odd push I can push the front end of the amp directly 
through the axe effects. Nice. So I can yeah. gain the amp up, or I can gain it down. Yeah. So yeah, it's I, it's an, it's a new system that I've been working with, but so far so far so good. Okay. So um, I, I noticed that Pete Thorne, uh, when he's playing uh, live and, mm -hmm. and doing it, he's wireless. Mm -hmm. You're not. For the yep. minute, So. Um, I have enough things to worry about without worrying about <laughs> wireless as well. Um, I'll be honest, um, I have tried a few different wireless systems. I hear a difference. I hear a difference. I feel a difference. Yeah. It almost like, you know, there's still the top and the bottom, but there's a lot of the mids just seem to go, and it's almost like you've, you've lost a bit of punch. Yeah. And um, some people have managed to make it work where they're very, very happy. Yeah. I am at the moment not in a position where that is, so I've got a 30 foot lead. I was just going to say, since, uh, <laughs> yeah, since you're 30 foot lead, does yeah. that give you enough freedom to get around the stage as much as you want? Or you do it's, uh, now now everyone else is on wireless, it's not a problem because everybody yeah. else knows um, don't keep stand quiet. on me. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I've just got to be wary that if I go in front of the mic stand, I can't come back behind the mic That's stand. Right, yeah. And you know, I'm quite, I now know. I've done this enough times, it's not yeah. my first rodeo. I've, I've managed to make it work where um, uh, you, you just got to think a little bit more. Yeah. So in, in terms of, obviously we're, we're, we're talking about your amplification, your guitars, it's mm -hmm. a lot more simpler and stuff. Yeah. So that's all about reducing the risk. So, so James, one of the many sort of questions that I was going to ask everybody was, most embarrassing moment or humorous moment on stage you've ever had in your life? Most what embarrassing moment per gig, I can probably give you. Um, <laughs> the most embarrassing moment, I mean, Embarrassing at the time, but when you come, when it comes to it, um, most embarrassing moment. Oh, I've had it before where I've completely forgotten the song, where I've got yeah. to a moment and I'm like, I really don't know where I am. I don't know where I don't know what my name is. Yeah. Um, and it happened the other night with one of the songs <laughs> where I got to it and I'm like, it's gone. Yeah. Don't know it. No. Nope. Been there. This is gone. Well. It's gone. It doesn't yeah. exist. Um, so we all have those moments, but for us. It lasts, a, it lasts a lifetime, but you've got to remember the audience instantly forget about it because they're that's just, right, yeah. and that's, you know, this is not a sport. Yeah. I I've, keep trying I've, to remind myself <laughs> this is not a sport. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've reminded my sort of band members from time to time about a reoccurring nightmare that I've, I have on occasions where I've turned up at Wembley, I've yeah. never played Wembley, I'm there, and there's a, an audience of 100,000 people, mm. and I'm there I'm thinking, but don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, we all have those. We all, we all have those moments. Yeah. Uh, so, but it's live. It's live it music. As James was really pushed for time, we had to call it a day at that point as he had commitments which he needed to see to before that night's show. I'd also like to thank James for giving his time so that we could see into the background of the classic rock show. Next time, we speak to Canadian guitarist Pete Thorne about his experiences in the show. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.